Say they. Oh. Pretty little blue servos and Arduino nanos. So the question is, how do we control three of these servos with one nano? So they're all independently running and the software isn't complicated. So Ronald Walters is building a Senior 20 conductor, which is an animated figurine, and he wants to control it with three servos. And he said to me that the examples on the internet aren't, are either really complicated or they don't really control the servos individually. They just do three servos, but they all go together at the same time. So I'm going to come up with a nice little simple piece of software that's going to do all of his specifications and hopefully it does it really well. I paid a full three dollars for this nano. They could have at least soldered these on, but uh, let's get started. So let's push both rows in. Now with these, it's very easy to get them kind of wobbling off like that. So what I like to do is get a breadboard or vero board. Probably shouldn't do it in one of these if you value it because it might melt it a little bit. So all I'm going to do is just solder just a couple of pins just to get it straight. There we go, that looks pretty almost. Yeah, it looks pretty straight right there. Maybe I'm a bit OCD, but I like my wires soldered straight. And there we go. So I'll just solder the four pins. I'll also push it down while I do it to make sure that they're all the way in. And this is where you should not be in a rush and just inspect it and just say, yeah, am I happy with that? And yeah, really straight. Oh, you're so lame soldering one pin at a time. So yeah, rather than soldering one pin at a time, we can be like a professional and solder lots at once. So we just, I've just got this tilted down at an angle of about 40 degrees. And we're just not too fast. Just click your way through it. Plenty of solder. You can't put too much solder in. And there we go. So now we need to put the servo into the breadboard. I've also got a diagram here showing which pin is which. Anyway, I'll solder some headers together. Yeah, do I have the skills? Can I end end or overlap them? Overlap looks pretty good. Get that middle one and the end one and flip it over. Ow, it's hot. Solder, solder, solder. That looks pretty good. Maybe that one on the end there could do with a little bit more. And I've got some solid core wire here. And we'll just bend those to the right spot. Give them a clip. So we'll just make a few of those up. So we've got our six pin uh, header to header. So we're just going to whack that. Where are we going to put that? Right there. So the top pin is negative. So let's. The middle pin is positive. So there. Okay. And I had to make a little jumpery thing because if I just plug the next row straight in, that will all be shorted out and each one is its own signal. So I've made this little thing. Anyway, so we'll plug that in. That's for the servo signal wires to go to the microprocessor. So 
So that's a bit wacky how that's going to plug in. Well, actually, I think I'll put the micro in first. So here's the Arduino. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. That looks pretty good right there. Let's hook up some wires. So we'll say the first servo is going to go to uh, pin three. Sounds pretty good. Pin three on that Arduino. Then we'll make the second servo go to pin four. And the, oh, I'm not even putting those in the right holes. Let's put those in there and there. And this one here, the last servo is going to go to pin D5. Well, actually, why don't I add a capacitor? Because that voltage supply could get a bit noisy with all those motors connected to it. So I've got a hundred, no, 220 microfarad here. That will do. Positive to the positive and negative to the negative. Okay, that's done. So let's plug in the power wire so we can make this wire the negative wire. That can go there. And the positive wire, which is on the floor, that can go there. And that's going to be for our 5 volt power. And let me connect these servos up. It's all wired up and ready to go, so let's see what happens. Being Arduino, we're just going to set the COM port to COM port 3 for this one. Set the board for nano. Correct. Okay. File. Open. Oh no, examples. Servo. Here we go. Servo sweep. That should do. So I'll just copy that into that window I've got ready set up for the camera and I think we put our thing on pin 3 was our first one wasn't it so we'll run that and see what happens and look at that isn't that easy too easy oh that servo has got a nasty potentiometer in it look at it boom that's terrible cheap Chinese rubbish there Okay, I hope Ron servo is better than that. Let's try pin 4 for the pin. Brilliant. Pin 4 is going. Pin 5. Brilliant. Okay, so that's done. We need to write some software now. So I'll get started on that. So, because we're going to start from the beginning, let's just clean off all this stuff. So we've just got our... Arduino loop there and we've got our setup. I'll leave that there for you for now. So we've got we're gonna have three servos. So we'll go servo uh, servo one. And I guess being computer guys we need servo zero, not one, two, and three. Servo two there's the three servos, so now we just go, uh, let's attach them all here. So we just copy that, paste, paste, oh wait, don't want all those tabs. Uh, three, four, five, and there we go, that's our five servos attached. Um, what we'll do is we'll just put an end to our program so it can stop here. So, that will stop the program in a while loop at the end. While one, because one is always true, isn't it? And we'll tab that in to be pretty, and then we'll just go my servo. Oh no, it's not my servo. Servo servo zero. Servo one. Servo two. And now we can go servo zero dot now. Autocomplete would be really handy here. What is the command? I will look it up. Now I'm going to use the servo command write microseconds because 
that writes true microseconds, it gives you true control of the servo and it says here that you can go between 1000 and 2000 but realistically you can actually go between 700 and 2300 but that could be dangerous if the servo motor cannot go that far. I'm going to use that because that means if you use degrees that assumes that the servo is calibrated and I don't want to complicate this and have calibrated servos. So let's just go servo right microseconds and 1500 should be bang in the middle. And so, we call it. so let's run that. That should zero the first servo if I'm lucky. Uh, oh, they all moved, but let's run it again and see what happens. Okay, so now we can go and do servo one and servo two. So that should home all of the servos. And none of them move, so now we can take these um, horns or whatever you call them and point them all to the middle because we know that that is zero. Well, that's not straight, is it? Now you can f I can feel that these servos are being held in position. If I try and move them, they fight me, which means that they're still attached. So this can actually burn the servos out if you leave them attached and nothing is happening for a long time. So let's put some detach code into the uh, program. So we'll move them and then we'll detach them. So servo zero dot detach. And then we'll do that for number one and number two. Detach. So it's downloaded. So let's see. Now they can move. So that means they're not loading up and consuming energy and burning out while they're doing nothing. So we need to remember to turn them off when they're doing nothing. So let's move them all to 1000 and we'll put a delay here because we don't want to de detach them if the move is not completed. So we'll do a delay of one second should be enough time uh, and run that. Yes, and they all went to the right and then if we make them 2,000, they should all go to the left. Very good. Sounds like music. Right, now to... that was really easy, so now we've got control of the servos. Right, now we need to write some code and make them all do different things. The program is now complete and it features uh, a homing function, which means that when it starts, it, fin it starts where it finished, and when it finishes, it finishes where it wants to start. And uh, that that's going to make it glitch-free when it's running. It's not going to glitch when it starts. Anyway, here it is. I'll just run it. So servo 1 is fast, medium, and slow. And you'll notice that this servo always stops at the right. That one always stops at the left. And that one always stops at the right. And if we run that again, we can just push the reset button. And it will always do the same thing. And then I can just set the duration to be less. And it will still home in the correct place. So that one's homing. So we'll look at the code here. We've got... Um, a setup which just attaches the servos and then we've got the main loop which just says do a hundred cycles and if we look at the header file it's got updates per second which is 50 so it'll update those servo positions 50 times a second 
so it'll do a hundred of those updates and then when it finishes it will home the servos so the main loop is this small it's only that big and it just counts down the total loops and it just runs the program for each servo run servo 1 run servo 2 run servo 3 and that way the main uh, the main CPP file is very small and and here's where it finishes it goes home servo and it just does 200 loops there and it just runs the servo home functions several times and then it detaches them like if I go and turn that now it's free to turn and if I put it in the wrong position and run it it will run it will glitch that one will glitch because it's now not in its home position yeah, you see that fired off probably easier if I get this one here now oh, that's still there we go it's finished it'll glitch yeah so you saw that one there glitched which is what we expected so the servo uh, code is really simple it's got a home position which is a thousand so that's a thousand there and and that's two thousand there and that's fifteen hundred there so um, so that's the home position then we've got some states which is moving left or moving right and that's just because it's only going to do those two states but you could put a third or fourth state in. you can make it do more um, more activities I'm just doing the most basic so then we've got the maximum position left and the maximum position right so we're going to sweep between those two positions and then here's, here's how fast it's going to happen so this one's set for 0.5 which is the fast one so we could set that for 0.1 and that first server should go quite mad with that setting let's try it yeah, it's going fast that's good brilliant and then we've just this is the this is the um, simple servo loop function which uh, all it does is just switch from moving left state to moving right state and it goes between the, the max left and the max right values so it, you've just got to modify those values and then the home server homing function just it just looks at the current position and moves to the home so by having one uh, CPP per servo we can control each servo individually with its own file and that way we get some clean code and then the main code is very, very simple. And at a later date, if you really wanted to, you could you could change this uh, for an interrupt. But I'm keeping it very simple um, because that's what the request has been. So I will upload this and make it available. The, the, um, these files will be zipped up and available in the link in the description. Anyway, I hope this gets your animatronics and and stuff like that going very simply for those people that aren't Arduino experts. Breadboard? Mmm.